there's an inextricable link between the denial of the right to vote for African Americans and sharecropper education. And the link was on full display when John Doe put me on the witness stand in Greenville, Mississippi in the spring of 1963. And the courtroom was packed with sharecroppers from Greenwood and the federal district judge Clayton just had one question. Why is SNCC taking illiterates down to register to vote? So at the heart of that matter was sharecropper education. Uh, and that's an education which says you are pre-assigned work and so therefore you get at best an education for the work which you've been pre-assigned. Now, the problem in the country is that sharecropper education has caught up with the whole country in the sense that over 90% of the students in the country get an education geared to 20th century technology, industrial technology, and a very small percentage are getting the education required for information age technology. Growing up, the regular way that they taught us, they just put on the board like this is the multiplication learning. We ain't really even had to learn it. We just had to flip to the back of the composition book. So it was like, we never really learned. All school was about was like memorizing, basically. Fannie Lou Hamer said, nobody is free until everybody's free. And so if my students feel shut out from access to college courses, if they feel like they're gonna graduate high school and they are still not ready to compete with the rest of the country for spots in math courses or access to higher education or whatever it is that they want to do with their lives, then that is a problem that we all should feel responsible for solving. So the Algebra Project as a legacy of the Mississippi Theater of the Civil Rights Movement has taken on this challenge. How do we eradicate sharecropper education in the country? One of the great resources in the Algebra Project is a collection of mathematicians and, and math educators who have, have really created a wonderful inventory of mathematically rich experiences that can be accessed at all sorts of different levels of cognitive development. We have students with us today who two years ago would have never defined themselves as a mathematician, but they see themselves as such now. They understand that, as Jeff Howard used to say, smart is something that you become, it's not something that you are. And so if I don't know it now, I'll know it tomorrow if I put in the effort. We're in the 21st century and you know the entire job market has changed, the entire economy has shifted. You know, we're much more information-based, we're much more science-based, we're much more about technology, I mean, all those things. And so really what we're saying is, what does it take to bring students so that they can fully participate in this economy, this world, this society? You know, whether or not they're, they're a scientist or an engineer, that, that matters less and less because it's weaved into everything that happens. So math literacy now is on the table and is because it's a new literacy in that sense, right? A new literacy required for a certain level of citizenship. Um, in the 20th century, you were okay to go to college and say, well, I don't do math, I do French, I do literature, right? But that doesn't work in this century. And so this literacy now is available because it's new as an organizing tool. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. It's a simple declarative sentence, and we have to decide if we are going to be a we the people in this country.